Hey folks, welcome to this video. We're going to take a look at how to use the glossary tool. Uh, the glossary tool is a really cool uh, feature within Moodle that you as an instructor could use entirely on your own to provide for your students, or you can have it as a collaborative interactive um, opportunity for students to learn and to contribute. So once we're in the course, as always, we turn edit on. And then we're going to come down and we're going to, again, find a different area to add that resource or add that activity. We'll find it under All or Activities, and it's right here, Glossary. And so the first thing to understand about the glossary is that when you go to build it, the first thing you're doing is building the container. Uh, so what that means is you're not going to do the entries on this page. You are just building the bucket for the entries. So you would give it a title. You might give it some description of, you know, um, course ideas. You can display this description on the main page. Uh, you won't have this option of uh, global glossary, that's for the administrators. And then you'll have glossary type. So there's two types of glossary. There's a main glossary and a secondary glossary. If the way to think about this is secondary glossaries can be pulled into the main glossary, but the main glossary can't be pulled into secondary glossaries. So this is what you want to have in mind as you're making the decision here. If this is the end all space where you want all entries to flow, great. But you might create a secondary glossary if this is something, for instance, you have students working each on their own glossaries. In other words, each is working on a separate assignment that is their glossary and then all of that will be pulled in. Um, or if it's you have your main glossary and you have students working on a glossary and then you can pick and choose what entries you bring into the main glossary to stick. So just keep that in mind as main glossary is kind of like the central glossary, if you will, and secondary uh, glossary is something that can be moved into the main glossary, but you can't have it happen the other way. All right, entries. Uh, we've got another set of decisions here. Uh, so approved by default. So as soon as somebody posts it, it automatically is accepted. You can have that yes or no and therefore have a little uh, be able to look at and review before uh, before allowing it. You can avoid duplicate entries. You can allow uh, always allow for editing. That means after the entry has been made, uh, people will still be able to go back and edit it uh, rather than just the uh, 30 minutes after it has been posted. You can also allow for comments on. This can actually be really useful, especially if you allow editing on because you can do a little bit of peer review. People can go in, give some feedback, or provide additional resources or ideas about what the entry should be. And then automatically link glossary entries. So this is a really cool feature. Within Moodle, what we have right now is if you create a glossary within your course and you have a term that shows up somewhere else in your course for instance uh, if you're somewhere in your course you're you have so in the glossary you have an entry on say uh, intersectionality and somewhere else in your course you mention intersectionality if you have this automatically linked glossary entries in that other part of your course maybe it's a description maybe it's a part of a conversation what have you when you write intersectionality, it will automatically link it. So if somebody's reading that, that word intersectionality, say, you know, in that description, now is linkable. And so somebody can click on that and go to the glossary entry. I think this is a super awesome tool, especially because it can give students a lot of quick accessible uh, contextual knowledge so they can click on that link they can see the entry they can learn from it and then they can go back to um, where they were so it's pretty cool um, I will say you know you want to be mindful then if you do decide to do yes um, the language that you're using and thinking about where it shows up elsewhere in the course because in making sure that you know uh, the term that you may be using is not necessarily so general uh, that it's showing up everywhere in that it may have more than one meaning unless you include that in the entry all right so appearance uh, it gives you a couple different formats which I you know which is pretty cool here you can have continuous without author meaning it's just kind of a list of of them uh, encyclopedia 
entry list fa you can set up as a faq which i kind of really like the full uh so here's the difference of full with author versus entry list full will mean you'll see the full actual um uh, the, the full entry and so the page might be particularly long if you do full with author and without author and then sim simple di dictionary style is a quick listing of the items if you need clarification on those you can also click on here and it tells you a little bit more about each of the styles all right how many entries to show per page uh, again you can kind of just decide how much you uh, how many how many entries you want show alphabet links this is really this is really on the main page which we'll see when we uh, save this of just making it easier to move through it essentially it makes the index a little more clickable and interactive and then the all link allows them to just kind of lay all of the content out and the, sh the special link means if there's special characters those two special characters so if it is a number or the pound sign uh, any term that uh, any entry that has that as its starting term will also be available to select as a link within the um, within the main page, and then allow print view allow people to print this out if um, if they so choose. So let's talk about ratings. Ratings is is as close to grades for this activity that exists currently. I imagine uh, there may be a future iteration which you can also sync this a little bit more clearly with the grade book, similar to discussion, but this would be how you might score it so you might want to uh, provide scoring in terms of the average uh, average of ratings if you want to, if you want to evaluate it that way the number of ratings how many they do or how you know the minimum amount they do or the sum of ratings and so whatever you choose here uh, when it comes to grading this it will give you a mechanism for uh, for putting in that uh, to for putting in that grade that grade if you choose to do it. So if you leave it as no ratings, it wouldn't matter. Uh, just for an example, I'll do maximum rating and see now it gives me some choices here. If I change it to average uh, points, I still have the same amount, but I can then kind of play around with potential scales and things like that. So again, let's just do no ratings. Common mo uh, module settings is always, do you want to show it on page? Restrict access is, do you want to you know provide uh, do you want to restrict who can see this or what conditions need to be met in order for them to see it? And then activity completion. Here again, I always like to do when conditions are met. And I think what's kind of cool here is, um, you know, it's they must view the activity, must receive a grade, must receive a passing grade, or must create a certain amount of entries. So you could set it up so they have to do at least one entry or two entry. Uh, this is all if you're deciding that they are, this is something that they will be doing. You could also, largely ignore this or just leave it at view um, if it's not a if it's not something the students are doing but that you are having them do all right so as I said th this is the bucket for creating the uh, for creating the glossary now what we actually want to do is go in and start adding entries so rather than save and return to course we're gonna save and display and this brings us into the bucket so here's our little description that I mentioned here, and here we have that glossary index that we can kind of, if there was a bunch of entries here, I could click on any one. Now, come, and here's the import entries, so if there's another glossary that I'm using and I want to import entries from that, I can certainly do that as well. Um, I can also export these if I so choose. But here's where it starts to get cool. I'm going to add an entry, and I'm just going to name it Uncanny uncanny valley and now here's the thing is it says definition all that you don't have to think of it as definition you can just think of it as information so yes you can pro you can think of this as just a straightforward information or you could play around and think about this as an interactive space so what does that mean well I might put in an entry right but I might also want to include say a video link right so that students can see a video about it I may also want to include an image here maybe I can find an example of the uncanny valley so once again I browse I'm gonna look around for some stuff and I'm actually gonna just go to my desktop here and go right up to this image here I'm gonna upload and I'm gonna 
I would give this more detailed description, but I'm going to say an uncanny image. Again, I might think about how I adjust size here. I might make this a little bit smaller so that it can fit on the screen a little bit more. And then I'm going to save image. And so now here is that image. So this is what's really cool is, you know, it doesn't just have to be uh, straightforward text. It could be some really rich contextual information that students can benefit from. I can also put in keywords. I can also, so the keywords idea is really by putting them in here, if there are other words in the glossary that are related to this word. So if I'm talking about Uncanny Valley, then some in you know some of that talks about video games. Then I might have video games as a keyword. The keywords will show up, and I'll do that right now. Video games. Um, the keywords will then be linkable. So if there is a video game entry, I would also, as I'm looking at the entry for Uncanny Valley, know that I could go and find out more about video games. If I had any if if uh, the if I had any attachments, I could add that. So maybe there's a PDF or some other thing that I could include. And then finally, this gives me back that case of this entry should be automatically linked. So that means again, wherever it shows up in the course, it'll be linked. Uh, and the entry case is case sensitive. That means if I have something capitalized or lowercase, that is how it should um, be linked. So if I had capital U uncanny in capital V valley, anywhere else that shows up as capitalized because it's case sensitive it will be linked but if i have lowercase uncanny and lowercase valley then it wouldn't be linked all right those are all the real things you need to know we can hit save changes and now we can see we have our first entry uncanny valley so as I said, you know, we put in that link, here's that video, so now we can the student could play that, here's that image, so you can really have fun with this. Um, and we had, when we set this up, we had done the dictionary simple list, and so that's what that appearance looks like. We can also play around and decide we just want an entry list. And now if we save and display that, we come down, oh, now it's an actual link, and so I can go in and now look at the entry for this and then I can move back and move around. So that's the glossary tool. It's a really powerful tool, uh, especially if you want to build out some common language, some resources and support around that language and have that pretty accessible throughout the course. So I hope this is helpful. Let me know if you have any questions.